one degree. Waves ebb and flow, oscillating in absent patterns, blaring the sounds of silent alarms. Factory fumes tease the waters like a barista concocts latte art, the product. A burdened atmosphere, wrapped in a cover page, aesthetic. As young people, we hear all the time that the world has changed an awful lot in the past few years. We hear that back in the day, we had to read the time from an analog clock. <laughs> that the closest thing to your iPhone was an old Nokia brick. We hear that the world is becoming warmer. That plastic is starting to outnumber fish. And the very essence of our world is no longer the same. That's a bit of a scary thought, and for good reason. Embedded at the heart of each of these changes is an underlying threat, sustainability. Often when we think of sustainability, we think of trees, green spaces, environmentally friendly products often miss the most central idea. Environmental, social, economic sustainability, you name it, all rests upon education. Without a sustainable education, we have no hope of tackling the new issues that the world throws at us. If we are to ensure that our world thrives for generations upon generations, to tell stories of how much their worlds have changed, we are dependent upon project-based learning, the epitome of educational sustainability. Project-based learning, or PBL, is education which evolves to take on and respond to complex challenges in a way that creates curious, creative, and critical thinkers. Students work for a period of, of time to investigate an elaborate and engaging challenge relevant to their own lives. And it begins with the P, project. A common misconception with project-based learning is that it lacks the structure of a traditional classroom environment. However, the process doesn't begin and end with an idea. It starts by questioning our society, our individual lives, and the reasons why we do the things we do. Project-based learning starts with the why. My own PBL journey is one of educational and environmental sustainability. For as long as I can remember, I have been passionate about the environment, yet my six-year-old self had never thought to ask why. Little did I know that this one small question would set off ricocheting sparks of bigger passions, self-discovery, and my very own PBL, plastic pollution, journey. You see, this one word, why, is wild. Let me show you. Marine animals are dying at the hands of our plastic. Why? Because our beaches are rubbish dumps. 
Why? Because we lack awareness around the dangers of plastics. Why? Because we live by a culture of convenience. PBL forces us to systematically address the root of an issue instead of taking its surface value. Next is B, based. Basing our ideas upon research and investigation. Through PBL, students learn not to be a sponge for facts, but to look at an issue from a range of different perspectives. I conducted a survey of students at my school as part of my B, based. I found that nearly half of respondents were mostly concerned about plastic pollution, yet didn't see the pollution. Why? Because areas where litter issues are prevalent, such as beaches, rivers and parks, tend to be considered recreational areas, where social values are prioritised over longer-term environmental values. PBL taught me statistics, science, geography, all at once, not by, me by measuring heights or hand spans, but through data that I cared about. It teaches us what sustainability really means and how it influences all those changes we're seeing in our world. So now that we understand the challenge and what has made the issue itself sustainable over years or generations, our next question is what capabilities do we have? Who do we want to target? And how can we do something that's never been done before? From that last point comes the success of creativity. It is L, learning. If we do this, we discover PBL as not just a way to learn, but a way to challenge the system. The PBL topics themselves are inherently future-focused. And in the spirit of future-focused learning, education should evolve to be better reflective of the goals of education today. It is not only preparedness students need, but a space to express their creativity and build on their passions. I founded an organisation called PS Our Beaches in 2016 as a first approach to the plastic pollution issue. It is dedicated to advancing the education and understanding of plastic pollution and environmental issues across New Zealand particularly among young people. My idea behind it was that it is young people who are most willing to change and, through PBL, can understand the many different perspectives on the world's biggest issues. Through Pierce Our Beaches, I have developed a network of young people, passionate, about plastic pollution, conducted litter audits, and interviews with organisations such as DOC and UNESCO. But where creativity comes in is the flexible means PBL gave me to converge different areas of passion. My passion for technology and the environment 
is leading me to develop a drone to detect and georeference macroplastics. This involves autonomously identifying the plastic through a camera feed, pinpointing its location, and sharing it in the form of an app so that others can pick it up. Meanwhile, my passion for poetry has led me to articulate my thoughts on plastic pollution and climate change in a creative format. PBL promotes and fosters links between current and new knowledge for students, not limited to subject areas. And it's beautiful. PBL is a unique pathway, allowing students to be inquisitive and curious, to ask questions and to use their natural instincts to reply to those. If we are to adequately prepare the next generations for their futures, we must teach them the skills as well as the information they need to excel. Through PBL, we are teaching students the importance of self-directed learning in the interconnected world we live in. And in our uncertain worlds with unsustainable futures, this approach is of utmost importance. Sure, not every student will connect with PBL, nor will every teacher. But giving them the space to discover what works for them is the greatest gift that we can give. We should be understanding of the different ways students like you and me learn and ensure that these ways of learning are made accessible to students at all schools, across all levels and all subjects. By doing so, we are not only developing dreamers, but real thinkers too. Six degrees on the exposed coast Footprints are littered with CO2. Wrapped in a thick foam and salty tears, waves brush against our feet, lapping at our ankles, but we are still watching as nature's artists paint our beaches, tracks of convenience designed with a greenhouse palette marbled across a changing canvas. Thank you.